us. Surjit, thank you so much for taking our time for us. Your first reaction, is this sort of a, a move justified for the pharma names? I think, um, see, uh, practically I am negative on uh, large cap pharma because I don't think they will get that kind of growth or opportunity in what they have achieved in, say, last uh, four, five or six years. So from that perspective, definitely it's a good correction for them in terms of valuation. Uh, as far as uh, some of the mid-cap companies where opportunity still lies, like Aurobindo, like Jubilant, like Glenmark, I think the more the price goes down, it will be better off uh, because a lot of weekends will be going out and institutional investors will have a good opportunity and good valuation to make it. Right. But, uh, you know, in such a scenario, you should look at names where, uh, you know, the overall concentration of drugs is very low. No. Uh, what I'm saying is that, you see, this is structural um, uh, issues in a sense that uh, now, now the perception is that if this kind of noise keeps on going, even after po post, um, you know, presidential election, now, what will happen is that you can expect some bit of uh, legislation which may control the price of generic price rise in U.S. So that could be structural negative for uh, any generic companies, including Indian companies in U.S. market. Right. Uh, and that can lead to a big valuation derating as well? Yes. Yes. Because currently... In fact, that only those... lead to valuation derating, right? X, X a one-off penalty. Of course, yes. I mean, I mean, see, valuation re-rating was on the card. It was just not reflecting because there are much of liquidity uh, in the market. And everybody wants to keep a, some part of their investment into, into uh, defensive counters. So but we have seen that, uh, you know, pharma stocks price run up. But even if those negative to single-digit bottom line grow, you could see their, their P is more than 22, 23, 25 in large caps. So I don't see uh, any reason to justify with that kind of valuation one year forward. I think it should come down below 18. Right. Will such a news flow impact Biocon as well? Yes, I think Biocon valuation, uh, while well, I'm positive on Biocon prospect, but if I go by the valuation, it has discounted too early too soon. Right, so that's not got to do with this news flow. Yes, uh, I mean, I mean, once this valuation comes, this will this will also uh, reduce the reduce the uh, you know exposure into that valuation. Right. What would be your top picks in the pharma pack now after the correction? Let's start with the large cap ones first. See, Aurobindo and uh, Glenmark, but the way Jubilant is correcting, I think uh, if it is more than 20, 24%, then it will be coming back to topics again. Right, and what is the reason to be positive on these names? That the earnings trajectory would continue or, you know, it would be broadly in line with what we have seen so far? I think uh, they are not very affected uh, by the structural issues which uh, benefited many pharma guys for so many years. So from that perspective, they are not that affected. So when it will go down, they will also not be affected either. Right. Uh, Surjit, and what is the next thing to watch out for, uh, you know, in this development? Or, you know, a lot of noise will keep coming. So any decline would be a buying opportunity even from here on and there is no hurry to buy or sell? Exactly. I, I would suggest that there is no hurry to buy anything else in pharma space. Just wait. Just look into, observe the, what is happening global, particularly in the U.S. market. And, um, and, and, and some valuation point, I think mid-cap, some of the good mid-cap could be, you know, good buy.